Thank you, a very good evening. Welcome to South Wales, where there's a little pink hue in the sky, the clouds overhead. And it has to be said, a relatively Spartan crowd here at the Cardiff City Stadium. Of course, it was sold out for most of the games last season. They got their lowest ever attendance here on Tuesday night for the League Cup tie with Luton. Barely 4,000 and plenty of empty seats here tonight as well. Neil Warnock was hoping that the fans had kept their powder dry for this one. He was expecting that they might be able to make a big impression tonight and cheer Cardiff on to a victory that they need. And we've talked about the respective starts that they've made. It is worth just reiterating that if Cardiff were to win tonight, they go above Fulham in the table. The 10 points out of a possible 18 would be a, a solid enough return, albeit the Cardiff have some difficult games coming up. Fulham, for their part, have played well, probably in most of the games. Not so good on the opening day of the season. Way of Barnsley beaten there. But they've had plenty of possession in matches. They've created chances, just didn't put them away against Nottingham Forest. This, though, is an intriguing task for the men in all red, whether they will be phased by the physical approach of Cardiff. We've talked about the way that the game might pan out, Matt. One thing that certainly is noticeable from the way that Cardiff City tend to defend and tended to defend in the Premier League is that the fullbacks, particularly Joe Bennett and Lee Peltier, are given the license to come in field. Now tonight, playing against wingers who naturally come in field because they play the wrong way round. They have a right footer on the left and vice versa. We just think to see whether if Bennett and Peltier come in with them, that leaves massive space on the overlap for the Fulham fullbacks, and that could be one of the key areas of the game. Yeah, the fullbacks in the in the Fulham system are very very good, and they've they've always done that. Whether it was Malone, people like that, there they they were key to how Fulham uh, played. Young Sessignon, he gets forward very very well, as does Brian. So yeah, if they come inside with these inverted wingers, as you talk about, and they are such a threat, then they'll hit the switch of play. You'll look at Arta probably looking to shift the ball quickly, switch the ball quickly, and then yeah, they could really really get hurt. They'll get bodies in the box full and will crosses into Mitrovic so that will that will be a tactic it will be interesting to see if they do employ that tactic because I think if they do with how fluid the movement is how good these players are on the ball of this ball inside then it will hurt them I think it really really could hurt them so yeah it will be interesting to see the tactics now what Neil Warnock knows his division very well doesn't he he's good at getting promoted out of it uh, and there's no fluke in that so yeah it'll be a good tactical game uh, uh, an inexperienced manager against a very very experienced manager well Fulham are in all red tonight Cardiff blue shirts and white shorts kicking from left to right in this first half Smith is in goal Peltier, Morrison Flint and Bennett Rawls and Bakuna White, Tomlin and Murphy and Glatzel up front Fulham Bettinelli in goal Sessignon Mawson Ream and Bryan Arter and Reed, Knockart Kearney Cavallero and Mitrovic who scored in each of his last four matches is the man that leads the line we're underway and Fulham from the kickoff in possession straight away the booze for Harry Arter he'll be having to get used to that linking up of course with Fulham this season having been at Cardiff last season and linking up for his brother-in-law Scott Parker who's uh, married to Mariata's sister Carly all out of play for a throw which will be taken over on the Fulham right hand side Stephen Sessignon to take it whose brother Ryan had a fantastic record in this fixture he actually scored in his first five games for Fulham against Cardiff these two teams that were relegated together last season they've been promoted together the season before that and on both occasions Cardiff finished above Fulham many observers thinking that that will be reversed at this time around certainly that's how the bookies see it excellent play by Mitrovic over on the Fulham right hand side just drew Aiden Flint out of position and wins the throw which will be taken quickly over on that right hand touchline by the men in red it's back for Kearney Kearney to Alfie Mawson and Mawson happy to sweep the ball all the way back for his goalkeeper Bettinelli who will bring it outside of the D and play it forward again to Mawson square from him to Tim Ream the tall blonde haired American international defender brings the ball through the centre circle and finds Alfie Mawson again a little right footed ball clipped for much more direct this time out towards Ivan Cavallero on the Fulham right he's kept it in and works it back with a suspicion of handball the referee has uh, agreed and has given the free kick to Cardiff in their left back position which will be taken uh, by their goalkeeper Alex Smith he's played 90 seconds here on TalkSport 2 it's Cardiff nil, Fulham nil, and here's Matt Murray well that run there from Cavallero was very interesting wasn't it he, he starts out on his left 
and he sees it there's a hole and he runs right in there near enough to the right channel you know where the right uh, where the Cardiff left centre back had come from uh, Mitrovic early on as well uh, being challenged by Aidan Flint right out on the touchline so you called it they are marshalling people right into areas which is then leading gaps and that's where you get the runners but already the pattern what we will see in this game Fulham dominating possession and Mawson getting a few boos x ones here absolutely might just have been mentioned once or twice didn't actually play in a, a South Wales derby uh, Alfie Mawson but uh, once you've been a Swansea player, then don't forget in this part of the world. Ball hits the corner flag. It's cleared by Session for Fulham. Then brought down by Cavalero on the edge of the uh, penalty area. But the referee spotted another infringement. And it has, in fact, uh, just gone out of play just over the line for a throw, which will be taken by Fulham about 15 yards from their own corner flag, which isn't necessarily where the ball had gone out of play. Arta facing his own goal hits an awkward ball back for Session does well to control it and then hammer it away with his left foot it's returned by Cardiff's Joe Bennett and then battling in the midfield Tomlin will bring the ball down over the top from Rawls but just nodded down very calmly at the back by Joe Bryan for Fulham to Bettinelli expect that possession's going to be about 70-30 in Fulham's favour that will suit Cardiff as much as it suits Fulham because they do like to play long ball on the counter attack so if we talk about Fulham dominating possession that doesn't necessarily mean that they're on top Cardiff will be happy to seed the ball in non-dangerous areas and here's Cavalera making his way forward plays it down towards Knockart on the uh, Fulham right hand side and Cavalero has certainly tried to make the most of runs from the left hand side of the field out towards the right to draw players with him he's got Bakuna keeping a very weather eye on him in these early stages ball out for another throw which will be taken on the Fulham right clipped over the top Knockart looking for the uh, run towards the uh, byline of Sessignon who couldn't do anything particularly constructive with it Cavalero's then in there the ball bypasses Arta and Joe Bryan will bring it down and he's midway inside the Cardiff half as he picks up possession lays it back for Reed to Harrison Reed. no Bobby Reed today for Fulham who's ineligible to play in this game on loan from Cardiff he can't face his parent club Mawson plays it forward now Harrison Reed trying to work the ball into the inside right channel for Kearney Cardiff clear Glatzel holding it up on halfway then very nearly able to squeeze the ball around the corner for Gavin White and as they do look long Tomlin made a run and his excellent goalkeeping acknowledged by my esteemed former goalkeeping partner here as Bettinelli raced outside his penalty a great anticipation it is and when your team play high up and you're committing bodies forward then the goalkeeping position this sweeper keeper role if you like you have to be bang on it because Lee Tomlin was definitely on side there and that's what Cardiff want have the ball have the ball Flint again coming in tight on Mitrovic but then a look to turn him in behind but that's where your keeper needs to be switched on so excellent starting position made it look simple but that's very good goalkeeping and key to this system five minutes gone nil nil Cardiff have played a couple of games so far here this season they've won them both with late goals they beat Luton in the sixth minute of stoppage time and then saw off Huddersfield with an 88th minute winner Fulham away from home won at Huddersfield lost at Barnsley on the opening day so a mixed bag for them nine points for Fulham seven for Cardiff at this very early stage of the season with five games gone separated by just two points but nine places in a pretty concertinaed championship table you're with talk sport two in south wales six gone it's nil nil uh, between cardiff and fulham and mawson will play the ball across the face of Reen to uh, play it out to the left hand side for harry arter he tries to mix it up which wasn't what joe Bryan was expecting Brian had come short, spun back and wanted the ball into feet. Arta tried to knock it over the top and goal side of Lee Peltier. And as such, he's missed his nearest teammate by 40 yards. He's gone out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, I think mean, slightly on different wavelengths there. And uh, these Cardiff fans enjoyed that, didn't they? <laughs> but you can see already Cavalero is coming in so much. And the width is going to be provided on this left side from Joe Bryan. Uh, oh, it's going to be, I'm going to be interested again to see how young Sessignon does saw his debut at uh, Huddersfield thought it was excellent got an early booking but did well and he's in possession now Stephen Sessignon wearing 43 lays it back to his goalkeeper Ryan Sessignon of course played well over 100 games for Fulham and Stephen his twin brother plays uh, just his 8th for the uh, first team tonight he has uh, started 4 of the 6 this season it's a throw which will be taken on the Cardiff uh, right-hand side, this near touchline. 
And it's Lee Peltier with him, right in front of the Fulham manager, Scott Parker, as he launches it forward. Art is there to head away. Back in kind from Peltier towards the edge of the penalty area. Glatzel, a big, tall German striker, heads it on and then links up the play very neatly as he tries to work it back towards the edge of the penalty area. Fulham win it back with Cavalero. It's a dug clear by Brian, but out only as far as Gavin White. Fulham again, just as slightly at cross purposes as we try to get the ball clear from the back. Bakuna picks it up. That's the signal as he works it back for Fulham to push out, but it's a good ball out towards the left hand side. Maybe handball there by Murphy. The referee just gave himself a little bit of thinking time and then blows his whistle. It's a free kick to Fulham in their right back position. Eight gone, Matt. It's nil nil. Yeah, that pass of play came about. Decent bit of play by Cardiff, but then when Fulham they didn't want to put their foot through the ball, so a good press again from Cardiff. They worked the switch of play. Came off the arm of the end um, of Murphy in the end, but he wants that. He wants to be one on one against Young Sessignon. Have a go at him, and I think. You know, if you look, if you think about Stephen Sessignon, his brother has played over 100 games, but they're still very, very young men. So if you actually look at him, for he's still very young in this defensive position to be playing at this level with these pressures, and I think he's a very, very good footballer. Uh, his brother's just been exceptional in what he's done. Yep, still a teenager, 19. Here's Tom Kearney making his way forward for Fulham. The White's skipper clipping it out towards Brian, coming around the back corner of the six-yard box, shot at the near post. Smithy's out, made himself big, got his thigh to it, and puts it away for a corner. Yeah, good play from uh, Brian getting in there. Definitely key to the system because Cavalero had gone in the middle, which had dragged Peltier in. Uh, Bakuna then is attracted to Mitrovic, and uh, uh, Brian, um, Brian comes out on the outside. But in two minds there. I think is he going for a shot? If he does, he's very tentative. But if you look, if you look to his right, there's three red shirts, and just did a bit of neither really. And but good, good play from Fulham. First corner of the night. So we're going to the tenth minute. Uh, it's going to be taken by Anthony Knockhart on the uh, Fulham left hand side, and he's just attracting the attention of referee Tim Robinson at the moment uh, to tell him that the uh, two Cardiff players aren't standing ten yards from the ball. Now the referee will go across and tell Knockhart to get on with it. <laughs> just a dialogue between the pair of them uh, as is the fashion both uh, talking to each other with the hand over the mouth so that nobody can uh, potentially lip read the conversation Knockhart is now happy nearest Cardiff player still isn't 10 yards away he's swung inside the penalty area half cleared right footed volley back in from Harrison Reed. that one's cleared as well out for Brian now to Sessignon brings it under control on the Fulham left headed round the corner by Harry Arter chased after by Knockhart and he goes out of play off Gavin White for another throw which will be taken by Fulham but this one is uh, much further adrift about 30 yards from the corner flag yeah, that's a uh, big Aiden friend. He's so good in both boxes, isn't he? He's excellent attacking, scores a lot of goals. He said one or two off 50. Uh, but then near the other end there defensively, right in the middle of that six, a good header away. And good block, though, from the strike from Reed from the edge of the box. And it's a unit as well, Aiden Flint. Six foot seven of him. The uh, most expensive signing they made is Cavalero. Cavalero towards the edge of the penalty area. Second chance for knockout. Vara deflection. And it's gone wide. In fact, I don't think he did take a deflection. Tim Robinson has given a goal kick, but it was a presentable chance. Just broke Knockhart's way inside the penalty area. Maybe snatched at the shot a little. Couldn't hit the target, but a decent chance. Yeah, it all comes about, though. Good hold-up play from Mitrovic. Excellent from Cavalero. Burst into the box. Maybe a little tug on his arm, but yeah, the first one was blocked. And the second one, it shows you, though, first shot off his... Uh, of his, of his, um, comes inside on his left, next effort of his right, and that's why he's so hard to defend against, because he's very comfortable off both, but good uh, defending the end from Bennett, but Mitrovic was at the heart of that, with that link-up play, bringing people in. Did score against Millwall, Anthony Knocker, the only goal that he scored for Fulham so far, front three for Fulham, all won promotion in their last seasons in the Championship, Mitrovic, of course, with Fulham, Knocker at Brighton, and Cavalero at Wolves a couple of years ago. So they know what it takes to get out of the division. Knockhart, indeed, got 15 goals in his last season in the championship. The ball will be played forward here, held up by Mitrovic. Back from him to Harrison Reed, now to Ream. Down to the left-hand touchline where Brian turns it round the corner. Not with the accuracy that was needed. And Peltier clears from Cavalero. Then it's knocked away and uh, Ream plays it for a little coming together between him and Tomlin off the ball. Flint gives it away 
And it's won back easily by Sessignon. Just passed straight to him in the midfield. Kearney had time to survey his options. Eventually gets it away from Tomlin. Reed into the feet of Arter and straight back again. And then Kearney will play it back for Ream, who will go forward to the right-hand side for Mawson. And back for Ream again. Fulham still inside their own half at the moment. Now venture into Cardiff territory on the left-hand side with the skipper Kearney, the Scottish international. Again, looking so he has so much time in the midfield. Lockhart loses out. Bakuna there to win it back. And he will clip it over the top for the run from Gavin White. And the Ulsterman makes his way forward. Can't find a way past Joe Bryant, who defended in the combination there with Ream. And Fulham able to bring it away. Cavalera just pulled back there by Peltier off the ball. The ball had gone set through the midfield towards Arta. But again, as he came into a midfield position, Cavalera, Peltier had followed him. And that puts immense defensive responsibility on Rawls and White when Joe Bryan then makes his way forward into that space it's something that Scott Park has obviously identified and that they're trying to make the most of whenever they can yeah definitely because you see Morrison going everywhere with Mitrovic whoever whichever centre-half Mitrovic uh, starts on follows him all the way in definitely there like you told me Rawls uh, sorry Peltier following Cavalera right in there is going to be runners from midfield you can see them knock out, out to win runners from midfield so yes midfielders are going to have to track the runners fullbacks are going to have to stay with runners and it, it will not surprise me at all if Cardiff get in uh, sorry if Fulham get in a few times in behind the Cardiff back line with these runners from deep nil nil couple of chances so far both falling Fulham's way Joe Brown with a shot that was saved and knock out firing one wide you're listening to Cardiff against Fulham in the EFL on TalkSport 2 with Screwfix proud partners of the EFL Tomlin playing it forward Glatzel couldn't quite link up with White but White has done really well very industrious does well to win it back from Mawson feeds it in and Tomlin in knocking it in towards Glatzel just sees his effort cleared by Mawson slides in and puts it behind for a corner first time that Cardiff have been able to turn the full and back line yeah massive massive intervention there from Mawson but it's good pressing good play from, from Cardiff but it's uh, good to see Glatzel trying a little flick that's a, a, a player with a little bit more confidence but he would have definitely got a tap in if Mawson and didn't get that challenge now a corner which will be very dangerous for Cardiff Joe Rawls will uh, take most of the corners from the Cardiff right it's a left footed in swinger from him headed away by Mitrovic who's so adept in both penalty areas back in from Bennett well claimed by Bettinelli taking it off the head of uh, Lee Tomlin and then Bettinelli gets it forward quickly and as soon as he had the ball in his hand Ken he was on his bike and sprinted forward but Kuna has tracked him but Ken he can pick it up for Fulham about 15 yards from the edge of the penalty area and the men in red will bring it forward. Knockout to Cavalero. Couldn't bring it into his stride. Then when it's cleared by Flint, it hits Cavalero. It just bobbles through for Cardiff goalkeeper Alex Smithies, who's uh, continuing to deputise for the injured Neil Etheridge. Still about a month away, the uh, Philippines international goalkeeper, who's got a hamstring problem at the moment. 15 minutes gone. Still Cardiff nil. Full and nil here on TalkSport 2. Matt Murray. Yeah, Smithies has to be very patient. But at the other end, very good goalkeeping again from Bettinelli. He protects protects the space so well not only the goal so when that corner got headed out by Mitrovic he's, he's like Flint very good in both boxes he, the, the Fulham team squeeze up and that's where your goalkeeper needs to be up behind you but then he doesn't only come and catch the ball he's realising that, uh, that Tom Kearney is making a run through and they're out of balance at the back and really good distribution so Neil Warnock won't like to see that they weren't locked, you know, uh, safe at the back if you like but it's a good little bit of pressure there from Cardiff and I think they'll believe that from set pieces they can hurt Fulham, especially the likes of Flint and Morrison. But I still, the fluidity of this front line, very, very impressive, and I think is going to cause problems. Possession at the moment, incidentally, which is something we talked about extensively in the build-up, 77-23. No need to tell you who's got the 77. Four shots so far, all have gone the way of the visitors, but Cardiff will feel that they might be able to create chances on the counter-attack. Peltier lays the ball back for his goalkeeper. Smithies clears it. Long right footed ball spinning in the South Wales night sky. Harrison Reed, flame haired midfielder for Fulham, heads it down towards the left hand side. Look at the Cavalero. It's cleared by Morrison, whose partnership with Flint at centre half still very much in its infancy and um, not necessarily gelled as much as they thought that they might. A few Cardiff fans are looking at the money that they got for Manga who went and 
looking at the performances of Flint so far since he's come, feel that it hasn't necessarily been a great summer in the transfer market, but very early days as far as Aidan Flint's concerned. You're not missing anything because Cardiff have a, a player's Lee Peltier down injured at the moment, and it'll be a free kick which they will take inside their own half. Yeah, with uh, obviously Sol Bamba out injured, and I think Manga's a very good player at this level, very mobile. That's probably the bit where Morrison's the one who's a bit more aggressive and dominant, but Manga's very mobile, so maybe Flint, again, similar mould to Morrison, if you like, so they'll complement each other as well. But Flint still, for me, is a very good, accomplished campaigner. Did well for Bristol City, OK for Middlesbrough. But it takes time. They have to build that partnership, and that has been a key to Cardiff's success, has been their defence, so they, they need to get that right again. Morrison, uh, part of the furniture here, of course, and he's just played an excellent ball down towards Gavin White, who took it on past Brian, but slightly overran it. And it goes out of play for a goal kick, which will be taken away to our right-hand side. 18 minutes gone, it's nil-nil. Saturday's game day across the TalkSport network. And it will feature three exclusive Premier League matches every week that you can't hear anywhere else on national radio. Next week, Reshman and the team at Southampton for their match against Manchester United tomorrow. Ian Dander at Chelsea as they take on Sheffield United. And then Liverpool going for a club record 13th consecutive league win at Burnley tomorrow night from 5.30. All three games live and exclusive across TalkSport and TalkSport 2 tomorrow. Joe Bryan's got the ball at his feet on the left-hand side for Fulham. Bang from him to Ream. Now to Reed. On the edge of the centre circle is Kearney. To Mawson, to Reed, and then to Arter. Now to Tim Ream again, who's 20 yards inside his own half. Just work it forward into the feet of Cavalero. Cavalero again, more than happy just to come into central positions. He's not holding the wick at all on that left-hand side. That's forcing Gavin White to play as almost an auxiliary right back as Peltier goes into the middle. Now those two will switch round, but Cardiff just continually trying to adjust to the movement of the Fulham players. 19 gone, it's nil-nil. I like Gavin White, though. I think when he's got the ball, he's looked positive going forward, but yeah, any lapse of communication, that could be very difficult. Who is accepting the winger? Who's accepting the fullback? White, another one of the uh, summer signings that came from Oxford. Great pace here as he makes his way forward. Checks, turns, tries to get away from Harrison Reed. Arter came and doubled up. They still haven't got possession back, Fulham. White now plays it down the touchline. Peltier will scramble after it. Arter went shoulder to shoulder with him. And then just got a toe to the ball as well. And he goes over the line for a corner. And Arter picked up the ball and with disdain launched it towards the corner flag. Home crowd appreciated that. They loved Harry Arter when he was here. Not loving him tonight. It's a corner to Cardiff at nil-nil. Another set-piece opportunity as they look for their first attempt of the night. It's going to be another left-footed in-swinger from Joe Rawls. Right arm above his head as he swings it in. He was attacked by Glantzel. Good header away and then fired over the bar by Joe Bennett. And out for a goal kick. 20 gone. It's nil-nil. Yeah, good header clearance again there from, from Fulham. They, they're sort of zonal around that six and they've just got to go and attack it. But <laughs> footballers hate it. It's called, they say to each other, wait, get in the gym. So they went shoulder to shoulder and Arta went down and he lost out on that one. So he'll be getting a bit of banter off his mates after that one. <laughs> Is there a gym at your club? <laughs> Jolie <laughs> Lescott was the best I knew at it. Honestly, if anyone went shoulder to shoulder with him, they knew about it. He was so strong. Goal kick taken from our right-hand side eventually by Bettinelli. Fulham had dropped a couple of plays back inside the penalty area for Bettinelli for the short one. He uh, elected to go long because of the uh, positioning of the nearest Cardiff players, the forward press that they love to do. It's launched forward by Peltier, headed away on the stretch by Mawson, brought down his space on the Cardiff left by Rawls, who finds Joe Bennett. Ben the man who's uh, experienced a play for three different clubs in the Premier League. Hoping to get there again with Cardiff this season. Tomlin squeezing it over the top for the run of White. Then headed away strongly by Archer under pressure from Bakuna. Brought down in the midfield by Mitrovic to Harrison Reed, who cleverly knocks it between Glatzel and Tomlin and finds Kearney. And Kearney now will be able to bring it forward. He's got that little pace advantage ahead of Tomlin and finds the space. Session, the overlap was the pass he tried to play. But Cardiff able to sweep up at the back, can guide it back for goalkeeper Smithies. And we're midway through the first half, as near as makes no difference. Still waiting for the deadline lot to be broken. 
Yeah, so as you said, Fulham had a lot of possession, but not too many clear-cut chances. Smithies hasn't had a serious save to make. Brian got in, maybe could have done better. But it's interesting with these goal kicks that Cardiff are playing the full press, locking right on, but that's leaving a massive gap because Mitrovic is stretching the play. First time Cavalero dropped in, good ball from Bettinelli. The second one, he tried to look at knockout, but got the kick slightly wrong. But again, that might be something that Neil Warnock might say somebody just try and protect that space a little because it just means that it's quite an easy out for Fulham uh, but Mitrovic's link up play earlier so so good the way he brings people into play and that's so key to this the system and how Fulham are looking to play so dominating the ball but I still think Scott Park will think come on we haven't really worked Smithies enough much more to his game than merely scoring goals and Fulham trying to make the most of the space again that time Knockart started on the right flank and just sprinted from the far touchline over towards this near side you can see the Cardiff players going do we go with him do we not go with him Fulham couldn't make the most of it and work it forward they go long now towards Mitrovic who off balance did really well falling backwards to get the top of his head to it very deliberately to get an effort in on goal Smithies in the end can make a comfortable save yeah in the end it's a comfortable save but as you say because of all this movement He's Flint and Mitrovic are totally 1v1 and you see Smithy's actually 4-5 or five yards off his line if Mitrovic had got a little bit more on that I tell you he'd have been scrambling he's done so well to get that on target but it's this movement has scored in each of his last four games Mitrovic he didn't play in the uh, cup tie uh, the other night when Fulham were beaten by Southampton ball swung in by Bakuna deflected and cleared outside the penalty area Back he comes from Peltier, Session meets that on the half volley and just lobs it up into space. Thought about chasing after it himself, realised he stood no chance. And Joe Bennett did trot back very quickly. I don't think he realised that Session had given up the chase. The ball goes back for Smithies away to the left hand side. Still chances at a premium at the moment. It is a fixture that Fulham have generally had the better of. They've only lost one of the last nine meetings, which was their trip here last season. Cardiff won that one 4-2 with uh, Schurler and Ryan Session scoring the Fulham goals. Murphy, Reed, Patterson and Harris, the men on target for Cardiff, of whom only Murphy starts the night. Reed now at Fulham. And Harris has uh, left as well for Pastures New. Here's Gavin White, part of the new Cardiff breed. Has he won another corner? Brian, yes, can't keep it in as he uh, initially got the block in, spiralled over the line. And it goes out for a third Cardiff corner. Yeah, but it's been a good battle. White is very, very direct. I didn't know lots about him. I think it shows good recruitment because you wonder why the likes of Kadeem Harris are allowed to go. Obviously, Mendes Lang being injured, but this has been a good battle. He's been very direct. He can go on his left and his right. It reminds me a little bit of Craig Noon, actually. Northern Ireland International. Gavin White, in comes the uh, corner, and it's just headed away, just by Joe Bryant, as it looked as though Tomlin might get there first, Peltier swings it back in, but not to good effect, and be chased after by Bettinelli, just to uh, do the job as ball boy, once the ball has gone over the line and out for a goal kick. So let's have a look at this Cardiff press, as they have a goal kick, Bettinelli will put the ball down, Mawson and Ream, the two Fulham centre-halves, now inside the penalty area, talk us through how Cardiff are approaching this yeah so Cardiff now playing the full press but Kuna's ready to release onto Archer if he gets it as soon as one of the centre halves get it in the box uh, pressure but it means that Cardiff are 3v3 at the back now so um, you've got Cavalero, Knockart and Mitrovic against Peltier, Morrison and Flint so what Bettinelli is looking at is thinking well if I play anybody here they're going to be straight onto me so one of the guys will now drop in they've spread the pitch right up front with Fulham and now they should drop it in and then look to get onto the second ball Fulham will and Flint won it as it was launched for by Bettinelli then headed away by Mawson back in uh, towards the edge of the Fulham penalty area from Rawls but brought down by Ream who chips it into space and Kenny can control it and bring it forward over halfway. Fulham will feel though that they've only got to get it right once three against three at the back and the referee took up station inside of in the Fulham half of the centre circle and there's literally not a player within 20 yards of him in any direction such was the way that Fulham had got the three forward and everybody else back 
They've made their way forward now. Cavalero out towards Lockhart on the Fulham right-hand side. It's still nil-nil. Harrison Reed then playing it back out of the right-hand touchline again. Level with the edge of the penalty area. Murphy's tracked back. Session's got it. Session into the uh, feet of Knockhart on the corner of the penalty area. Chance to try and turn for Cavalero. Cavalero chipping it into space. Then brought down on the chest of Mitrovic. Can he get a shot in on the turn? Yes, he can, but not with the power necessary. Morrison did enough. Smithy's made an easy save. Morrison did do enough, but if that had gotten across into the far corner, then he'd have been disappointed with himself that Mitrovic was allowed to bring it down on his chest and then turn. You think, no, I've got you facing away from goal, I've got to stay tighter, but at least because he showed him outside, didn't have much to aim for. But um, going back to that full press, it would be interesting if Fulham lined up one side, would all the Cardiff defenders follow them, leaving a big gap out there, and then could Bettinelli drop it in there with the pace of Cavalero, he'd back them to be get onto it first. Something I'm sure that Scott Parker, Stuart Gray are thinking about on the Fulham bench. Matt Wells down there as well, giving his advice. Fulham bringing it out from the back here with Alfie Mawson, 27 gone. It's nil-nil here in South Wales tonight on TalkSport 2. Sessing on force under pressure to go all the way back to his goalkeeper. And we played out again towards uh, Tim Ream. Ream to Harry Arter with the dark floppy hair back for the bearded Ream now to Alfie Mawson making his way forward 10 yards excuse me inside the Fulham half and now inside the Cardiff half as he drops the ball at the feet of Caballero to Cessignon then coming in off the right hand touchline it's worked forward towards Cessignon again knocked away by Peltier Peltier the right back playing on the left hand side of midfield there because he tracked Cavalera. I know that it's a point that we're labouring but Cardiff defend in a manner that very few sides do and it's just interesting seeing whether Fulham try to exploit it Cardiff sticking to their defensive principles backing their players to be able to adjust around what they do is they chase a given man in possession yeah I, I don't see other teams defend so man to man like this you usually look at people passing on and staying in units and holding your zones um, but no passing on and I think it can be exploited for sure right hand side of the penalty area Sessignon's got it for Fulham he's played it back for Kearney Kearney angling a ball through the midfield which is picked up by Ream on the edge of the centre circle Cavalero again drops deep Peltier shadowing him from one side of the field to the other so there's now a big gap on the Fulham left hand side as their players are concentrated on the right Joe Bryan made his way forward from left back he's given the license to push forward whenever he can and take Gavin White back with him Mawson brings it forward now for Fulham into the feet of Mitrovic Mitrovic Morrison comes out space inside the penalty area Sessignon's offside good run the idea was right just went the fraction early and the Cardiff offside trap worked well well that is how they're going to exploit it so as we've seen out on the side just in front of us on the on the Cardiff right White is tracking Brian all the way back well because Morrison went right in with Mitrovic um the, f the fullback over that side which was Bennett at the time had gone with the winger Sessignon came in and he got the run on Murphy wingers do not want to do that they don't want to go with the fullback all the way in there and he just went slightly too early if he hadn't and the ball was right he was in we've seen Brian get in on the left for Fulham and that is going to be the key goal scoring fullbacks or getting into positions and that's that's how I you're going to do exploit this all with runners from midfield but it's n I don't think it's I know it's nil-nil but that is definitely something that they can exploit has to be said it's a formula that worked well a couple of years ago when they won promotion they only conceded 39 goals all season that was the joint best record in the division along with Middlesbrough that said last season having had the best home defence in the championship a couple of years ago they had the worst home defence in the Premier League last season Glatzel's got it at the other end he's gone down and has won a free kick for Cardiff about eight yards outside the box right hand side of the uh, penalty area and this is a promising position it is the cue for Morrison to make his way forward Flint will come forward as well Murphy waits Lee Tomlin and Joe Rawls are the players that stand over him it's the one man in the uh, Fulham wall it's going to be Tomlin to try his luck from here you can imagine that he's uh, going to be swinging one in rather than going for goal he's a uh, the player whose last Cardiff goal was at Reading back in December 2017. Of course, he spent last season out on loan at Peterborough. Well, the majority of last season out on loan at Peterborough. What can he muster from here? Every Fulham player back inside his own penalty area. 
big gap for Bettinelli to try and patrol here. The defensive line 15 yards from goal as the ball is swung in. It's knocked away easily by Mawson in the end. Bennett will be able to pick it up on the Cardiff left. Rawls makes a good intelligent passing angle for it. That is his work back over the top. Flint got there ahead of Bettinelli but was offside. And Fulham again congratulate themselves about getting the defensive line right. But as he was teased back over the top, it took nerves of steel as they played that offside trap because there were four Cardiff players who made runs from deep. And only one of them needed to get there and get it right. And that was really, really close, having seen the replay. I think the assistant referee, to be fair, on a very difficult decision, Andrew Fox, has got it spot on. It's good officiating and good defending. But it was very close. Very close, of course, is offside. Yeah, offside is offside. But as you say, it's risky, it's brave, but it takes work on the training ground. It takes organisation, communication, and everyone knowing what they're about. So, And, and then Bettinelli came for the punch. But because Flint was just offside, there were other players who were well offside, but Flint is a one, and that was very, very tight. And again, from the free kick, they locked on high. But that's what um, Cardiff will be looking for, set piece in dangerous positions. But so far, both teams defensively from set pieces have been excellent. They've got the first contacts on the ball, which is something that you always work on. First contact is massive, and both defensive units have done that. And not only got good contact, you know, got the first contact, they got good contact into good areas. Well, he's a goal-scoring threat, Aidan Flint. He once scored 16 goals in a season from centre-half for Bristol City. Uh, every one of them accompanied by uh, an amusing meme on Twitter. But 16 is some record he's got 49 goals in his senior career from the back is uh, very impressive his ream and he will bring the ball forward into the center circle for fulham they've had the majority of possession overwhelmingly but haven't created as many chances as they would like for 74 percent inside half an hour they've had three attempts on target so far that is three more than cardiff mind here's mitrovic Mitrovic lays it back for Harry Arter. It's nil-nil. Clouds beginning to thicken overhead and, and look menacing as well. Bit of rain on the way, I think. Ball played for by Mawson. Brought back down by Murphy. Neat turn. And Bennett will uh, win a throw. He's knocked it out of playoff knockout. And a throw which will be taken over on that far touch line by uh, Cardiff City. 34 on the clock, Matt Murray. It's Cardiff nil, full of nil here on two. It is, and I just feel, when I watched... Fulham at Huddersfield, first half, Kearney wasn't on the ball enough in the areas that they wanted and pulling the strings. When I watched the highlights against Millwall, Kearney was at the heart of things. And I just don't feel that Kearney's doing enough yet. Now Murphy is onside, he gets around the back, he's got options in the middle. Gavin White can't quite bundle it over the line. Credit to Bettinelli. Because Murphy did well, got round the back, got to the byline, looked up, saw Gavin White make the run. And I don't think that White made the run he wanted. He's fired it into what he hoped was a dangerous area, and Bettinelli has come out, flicked it away into White, but it's hit him and gone wide. Yeah, he, he knew that if he if he didn't cut this out, Bettinelli, so Murphy's in there, as you say, not the cleanest connections, but he knew that um, there were players in behind him who were looking to tap it in, but Bettinelli did ride his luck a little bit, because another day that bobbles off the striker and goes into the net, but still good goalkeeper from Bettinelli. I keep saying about it, not only protecting your goal, you have to protect space at times, and he knew that if that ball got rolled in behind him, it was going to be a tap in his, his team were going to be behind. So a very dangerous position there for Cardiff that they didn't maximise. It's a fixture that uh, wasn't kind for him last season. He conceded four here in South Wales uh, last season. Marcus Bettinelli and then was dropped. Didn't make his way back into the, the Premier League side. Ball played over the top by Mawson. And it'll be chased down the right-hand side by Sessignon for Fulham. Uh, he's handballed it. And it's a free kick to Cardiff, down by their own dead ball line. Ten to go to half time. Huge day of live sport and programming on Talk Sport 2 tomorrow. And catch weekend sports day from 8 a.m. With Adrian Clark and Mark Webster looking ahead to a busy weekend of sporting action across the Talk Sport network. Then from midday, there's more EFL action as Bristol City take on Middlesbrough from 2.30. As part of game day, Ian Danter brings you Chelsea against Sheffield United. Then at five, after all the day's results, Adrian Durham will bring you the full-time phone. That's all live and only on TalkSport 2 tomorrow. We've got nine minutes to go to half-time tonight. And it's still Cardiff nil, full of nil. Not too many goal-scoring opportunities. So intriguing. The tactical battle between these two and their different styles of play. We are expecting it was uh, going to be easy on the eye and something that gave us plenty of talking points and it has been exactly that.
two Fulham players went for the same ball in the midfield. Brian then did well to uh, not end up uh, crashing over the hoardings as he cleared down the left-hand side. Artisan strongly nicks it away from Tomlin, but Bennett picks up the loose ball in the midfield for Cardiff. Now plays it down towards the Cardiff left for Rawls. 36 gone, nil-nil. Murphy hasn't really had too many opportunities to run at Cessignon. That time he elected to go back through the midfield and misplaced the pass and has given possession away before a free kick is given by referee Robinson for a foul on knockout. 37 gone, nil-nil Matt. Yeah, I think Cessignon's doing very well against Murphy. He's running him back towards his own goal, getting into areas, and then he gets tight to Murphy very early. The one time he got spun in behind and ended up with a good Cardiff chance when Bettinelli palmed it off White, but all in all, Cessignon against Murphy's been good. I think it's been intriguing down here as well, White against Brian, and White again is having to chat Brian, uh, trap Brian right back, but I still think Kearney needs to get on the ball more for Fulham and make things happen and be that creative one, and I think you can see good identity you know what Scott Parker's team trying to do but they've got to have more potency they have to Brian ran out of room on the uh, left hand touchline and uh, ended up in the uh, the Cardiff City dugout there ball's gone out for a throw which will be taken on the Bluebirds right hand side by Lee Peltier and Peltier experienced old campaign in nearly 150 games for Cardiff and 475 in his career now and he's hurled the ball down the right hand touchline Flicked on by uh, Glatzel, who, as we mentioned, hasn't opened his uh, account for Cardiff. And seeing tonight, you can see why. Because, as you mentioned before the game, Matt, every striker needs service. He hasn't been given a single opportunity yet inside the penalty area. Much of his work without the ball and the linking up the play has been exemplary. But every number nine is going to be judged on his goal tally first and foremost and he just hasn't had a chance yeah and you look at him very you, you imagine if you put balls into that second six yard box or in around that six yard box area he will go and attack them he looks like a fantastic athlete very good specimen and he reminds me a little bit of um, Grant at uh, Huddersfield he yeah. hasn't had enough service either and everyone he's either scored a penalty or made a bit of magic of header so he needs service he's not getting it oh Mitrovic a lovely little drop of the shoulder he got past Flint but couldn't beat Morrison too but that was excellent from Mitrovic great approach play man much admired by Neil Warnock incidentally ball brought down by Sessignon cleared up the uh, Cardiff right hand side Cavalero brings the ball down finds Kearney in the midfield Mitrovic showed for it wanted it into feet Morrison tracked him ball play back is there for Arta Arta four towards Ream and then Morrison looks as though he'd shoved Mitrovic over referee allows play to continue as Cavalero tried to bulldoze his way through Peltier eventually clears and back it comes from Sessignon but Tomlin can bring that one down plays the direction he's facing back towards his own penalty area and Flint clears his lines Tomlin trying to emerge with possession through the midfield kept hold of it too long Kearney for Arta Mitrovic edge of the area gets the right footed shot in Morrison blocks it at source and the loose ball spins out to the Fulham right hand side where Murphy can't keep it in and it's a Fulham throw some good bits of pressure there and chances glimpses for Mitrovic but both times good cover in defending skip past Flint good from Morrison and again there uh, Tomlin caught and Murphy's caught again the, the turnovers have been good Arta wanted to get a shot in was uh, denied that it'll break for Cavalero right footed effort and he's curved it wide of the post the Smithies just puts both hands up tells his defenders to calm down but it's been a good two or three minute spell for Fulham their best of the game yeah, and he's come from good pressing every time. He's been good challenges, but Cardiff won in too many touches on the ball. Probably more how you'd have thought Cardiff chances would come about would be them catching Fulham. Well, it's Fulham catching Cardiff on the ball. Good transition, and there Cavalero just couldn't quite get it to come back. But yeah, that's where Smithy's the experienced goalkeeper, saying, well, he was just taking a little bit here. I'm going to take this thing out of the game. He's taking his time over this goal kick, and he's going to boom it as far as he can because Fulham been pressing well but going back to it Flint squared up by Mitrovic good covering from Morrison he needed his uh, defensive partner there Gladsell dropped deep and that was an intelligent flick on towards Tomlin Peltier then wins the battle ahead tennis but White has come back from an offside position and the free kick is getting Fulham's way in the touchline 41 gone you're listening to Cardiff versus Fulham in the EFL on TalkSport 2 with Screwfix proud partners of the EFL Tim Ream bringing the ball forward. Jim Proudfoot and Matt Murray talking through the action in South Wales tonight. The score is nil-nil. Harrison Reed 
and for Ream. Ream inside the centre circle. Brings it forward over halfway. Tomlin, the times a peripheral figure, can't get there. The Flint plays it forward. Here's Murphy on the break. Glatzel's in the middle. Oh, didn't need it. Murphy scores. Cardiff lead. Classic counter-attacking football. Ball work down the channels. Murphy came in off the flank. He had Glatzel away, Matt, if he needed. It was only one covering defender. Bettinelli couldn't keep it out. And against the runner play, Cardiff lead Fulham by a goal to nil. Yeah, Murphy hasn't had many sniffs, but he's in, they're in good possession and Fulham they give it away and we talked about that transition but then it's 2v1 and, and Morton has to go across in the end to Murphy you're thinking difficult angle still it's quite a hard finish this good play from Flint though the ball from Flint is excellent but Murphy there he's, he's, his first touch takes him a little bit wider than he wanted to Bettinelli probably going to be a bit disappointed here because he gets a hand to it but it's a great goal from Cardiff in the way that their game plans work but yeah he's got a good hand to it but it's caught more he's no more his wrist he's gone into the back of the net but that is what Fulham get caught with they build from the back they take chances and if you can be clinical with that transition and what a time to score Cardiff 1 Fulham nil. Josh Murphy's first goal since December when he netted against West Ham his first in 22 games he this score in this fixture last season, indeed, it was his last goal here, and he scored against Fulham again. 1-0 the Bluebirds with two minutes to go to half-time. Glatzel, fouled, back on his feet, good advantage from referee Robinson. Cardiff with their tails up, particularly this man Murphy. Let's it run this time for Bennett. Bennett's clearance, or Bennett's cross, I beg your pardon, was cleared by Cessignon. Kearney comes back to do the rest, and then he lays it forward. Bennett gets his foot to it he comes back off Sessignon's chin and Cardiff can get Tomlin in here Tomlin reverse ball Glatzel with an effort that one's blocked Gavin White right footed shot blocked by Joe Bryan on the turn I just wonder how Glatzel left that for Murphy whether he would have been better placed here's Gavin White the next phase of play good ball in headed away by Ream all of a sudden Cardiff asking much more pertinent questions around the edge of the penalty area Arta buys a free kick and some respite for Fulham who've been on top for 38 minutes but we've talked about the fact that Cardiff won't mind not having too much possession and they've hit Fulham with a sucker punch and they could have made it two seconds later yeah they could have and we talk about Smithy's taking a sting out of it now Bettinelli's having to take a sting out of it but he is I felt he should have done better with it to his left for the Murphy goal but that strong left hand to deny Glatzel that could be a massive moment in this game just before half time going in 1-0 or 2-0 very different but it's amazing how the momentum changes they took their chance with the press with the game plan and now they're putting the pressure on White again brilliant bit of skill and good pressure but wow it's just amazing how our moments can change quickly and they always say it, goals change games Mitrovic makes his way forward, he's got the better of Morrison, plays it in towards Cavalero. Cavalero to the right-hand side of the box, an opportunity for Kearney to deliver. Back for Cavalero, put on a plate for Mitrovic, and it's 1-1. The lead lasts in only three minutes. Mitrovic scores for a fifth successive game. And as we go into first half stoppage time, Fulham a level again. Cardiff 1, Fulham 1. Yeah, what a response. What a big save. Sometimes saves are like goals. Cardiff could have been 2-0 up. Now it's 1-1. But Mitrovic starts this move. Really good play. Then out wide. Brilliant from Knocker. And then, oh, is it Kearney? And it's a little bit of play. So Kearney out there in a very positive position. Mitrovic starts and finishes this move. But a little bit of skill. And the ball back to Cavalera. Then his ball across. And you don't miss from there. A man like Mitrovic doesn't miss from there. But what a response. His game has just come to life. But that Bettinelli save was so important. 30 seconds after it. When it could have been 2-0. It is one apiece. Cardiff scoring with their first shot on target of the night. Fulham responding three minutes later at the end of the most torrid spell that they'd had to endure. Here's Harry Arter now for Fulham. Edge of the penalty area. Getting it onto his right foot. Can't get into a shooting position. Checks back inside. We're in a minute of stoppage time. Cavalero now. Reverse ball for Joe Bryan. Cardiff turned again. White's done well. Stood his ground. 
and Smithies can come out and pick it up and that will take us into the break level at one apiece well done White I tell you what Gavin White has done brilliantly there and what an end to the half real tempo but that could have been another dangerous ball across but it's just amazing amazing how quickly games can change And but you just hear the crowd then turning a little so now both team talks have been turned on their head Cardiff thought they are going to be talking about being 1-0 up maybe 2-0 up and now it's 1-1 but really good finish to the game with some real tempo so often the way of it that when there's a quick exchange of goals between a side like that the team that scores the second one the equaliser has a massive psychological advantage will that be taken into the second half by Fulham Murphy on 42 Mitrovic on 45 half time Cardiff City 1 Fulham 1 and the two teams are just making their way out of the tunnel They're just down beneath us away to our left hand side and there's no sign of any changes being made at the break so Cardiff Smith is in goal Peltier, Morris and Flint and Bennett Rawls and Bakuna White and Murphy wide and Tomlin of Glatzel up front Fulham Bettinelli in goal Sessignon, Mawson, Ream and Bryan Arter and Reed, Knockart Cavallero supplying the width and Tom Kearney at 10 with Mitrovic up front it's Murphy and Mitrovic with the goals just three minutes between the pair of them but one very significant Bettinelli save in the middle of that period as well it could easily have been 2-0 to Cardiff as it is it's 1-1 as we restart the game Joe Rawls laying it out to the Cardiff right Cardiff kicking from right to left in this second half in their royal blue shirts and white shorts Fulham in all red here on TalkSport 2 possession in that first half 75-25 in Fulham's favour four shots on target for them and two for Cardiff ball knocked away by Smithies it's a real high spinner over the halfway line returned by Mawson's header just away from Mitrovic Flint comes across to head away Mitrovic read it so too though did Peltier who can get there first lay it back for Flint who will clear over the halfway line Joe Bryan's in there strongly and knocks it away off the nearest uh, Cardiff player and out it was Glatzel for a throw which will be taken over on the left hand side talked at times in the first half about Robert Glatzel uh, just an insight into his pedigree 64 goals in his career at a rate of better than one every three games includes a hat-trick against Bayern Munich albeit in the losing cause in the German Cup last season for Eidenheim and he scored 13 goals in the German second division last season so he does come with a little bit of pedigree but just hasn't had a sniff of goal tonight really 90 seconds into the second period Mawson as the boos will tell you in possession it's always going to be him or Arta whenever you hear the boos it is Mawson at the moment and he will bring it forward he's midway between the edge of his own penalty area and the halfway line as he goes square to his left hand side for Tim Ream and then back for Mawson again and his passage is a play Matt, like this that certainly up Fulham's possession tally this is just sterile possession inside their own half that's neither here nor there yeah he's not hurting Cardiff and but that they're then looking Fulham to try and find that ball in to break the lines but in that midfield three Cardiff are trying to lock on you know Rawls is <laughs> you know I mean he's so close to Kenny all the time Kenny thinking any danger of me losing you but, um, but that's, that's the way they're doing it. You can just see there, Tomlin just left a little one in on Reed. But that's what they want to do. They want to just frustrate Fulham. Hope someone tries to fish a little one in or force a pass and then bang onto it like they did. Um, but at this moment in time, Fulham having a lot to play, but not really going anywhere. It's Mawson who's got it back for Sessignon. Now to Ream. Ream square to his left-hand side for the left-back, Brian. And then uh, out down towards Mawson again. Mawson this time clipping it over the top Mitrovic having a quick look to see who was uh, round him it was Aiden Flint he's laid it out towards Knockart Knockart back for Mitrovic just too far ahead of him and Mitrovic didn't gamble I don't know whether he just didn't read it half a second in time it's half cleared Knockart comes again now Sessignon down by the bar line right footed ball clipped deep towards the back post Mitrovic brings it down on his chest and gets a shot in into the side netting Vara deflection for a corner yeah really good play so what happened was when um, Knockart got the ball out wide because Flint had come over Mitrovic it ended up with Knockart out 1v1 against Flint which is what he wanted ball into he say I don't know if Mitrovic as you say just didn't quite anticipate it but they keep the ball alive well good combination play 
Ball back again in Sessegnon getting there. But what he did was recognise the right ball was to stand it up to the back post. But good defending in, in the end from Cardiff. But that's better, more purposeful play from Fulham. Three and a half minutes gone, second half here on Talk Sport 2. As the corner comes in from the Fulham left, headed away commandingly by Morrison. And then Tomlin comes to meet it, guides it on. Fulham winning back though with Kearney. And Kearney will feed Sessignon back from him to Brian to Ream and to Brian again under pressure from Lee Tomlin he's more than happy to work it all the way back to his goalkeeper Bettinelli two defeats in a row coming into this one Fulham and 16 defeats in the last 23 league games most of which obviously were Premier League encounters their away form very poor in the Premier League arriving in South Wales tonight they've taken only 8 points from the last 22 away games so one at Bournemouth last season Huddersfield this couple of draws every other game in that run has ended in defeat it's a mindset I guess I know it's a slightly rebuilt side but still a mindset that has to be adjusted having come down a division here's Harrison Reed on his full debut for Fulham tonight he's had uh, good loan spells at Norwich and Blackburn in the past back from him to Kearney now to Arter Ah, to play back to uh, the industrious Brian who finds Ream. Mawson inside his half of the centre circle under pressure from Tomlin who's chasing obediently at the moment but not really uh, able to get his foot on the ball. Just doing doggies between the, the two Fulham players in possession. Ream plays it out to the uh, Fulham left-hand side. Cavalero drops deep this time. He's able to turn and get on the end of a pass from Arta. Kenny comes out a little bit deeper and he's inside his own half and his uh, fluorescent yellow boots as he picks it up and now finds Mawson Fulham trying to make the most of the space it was very well read though by Rawls as the uh, ball into the feet of Mitrovic didn't get there Cardiff snaffle it up and go back for their goalkeeper and Smithies will clear his lines and Tomlin's just left another little one on Harrison Reed there off the ball play forward again by Bennett and then over the top by Rawls Glatzel will go up for it he won it in the air ahead of Ream brought then down by Tomlin Tomlin getting away from Reed here's Lee Tomlin little reverse ball Glatzel's had no chance of getting on the end of that and Ream will be able to sweep it up for Fulham six gone second half it's one apiece but here come Cardiff again with Bakuna and to Gavin White, Peltier, down the right-hand side of the area for Bakuna's run, and Fulham can knock it away. Yeah, good play from Tomlin, just to bring it down. He's a, out of possession, he'd been a little bit niggly, but then he brings it down, drives, but just that end product. Glatzel made a decent run, wasn't close enough to him. I don't know if he's in court in two minds, or if he's trying to find Murphy or Glatzel, but the pass wasn't great. But go, going back to, to Fulham, they get the ball, they move it, they move it. And it is tiring for this Cardiff side because they're doing so much work without the ball, shifting from side to side. If you said, Tomlin's had to do that a lot. Now Morrison very nearly caught by Fulham's forward press. In the end, he got it off the iron and out of play for a throw. It's probably the best he could hope for. It could have been much, much worse as two Fulham players very quickly bore down on him in possession. It's a throw to Fulham. The travelling supporters from West London find their voice away to our right-hand side. You're listening to Cardiff against Fulham in the EFL on TalkSport 2 with Screwfix, proud partners of the EFL. Seven gone second half, one apiece. Ream finding Mawson. And Mawson will bring it forward towards the halfway line before hitting a long diagonal ball over the top. And Mitrovic was onside. I don't know whether he thought he was off. And in the end, he just ran away from him. Looked as though he just hesitated for a moment before really committing to bring the ball down on his chest. And the chance had gone. Well, I was just thinking there, this is the first time that both wingers for Fulham have stayed really, really wide. And it's Bennett, who's a little bit deeper than the two centre-halves, who's played Mitrovic on side. But the fact that the two wingers are so wide for Fulham is then leaving that bit of space because, of, <laughs> because as you said, the full-backs mark the man-to-man. -man. So then he could pull off on the shoulder, and the ball was excellent. But Mitrovic, I don't know why he didn't take a touch and then finish it. He let, let it run, and then the chance had gone. I'm not sure why, why he didn't just bring it down. Come back to that in a moment. It's Carter bringing it forward here with Gavin White from a quickly taken throw. Rawls has it down to his left-hand side for Bennett. And it will bring it forward and find Murphy. Murphy trying to go the long way around Sessignol, who's uh, come across and put it out of play for a throw. Good defending. I just wonder that last ball forward, as you say, Bennett, the left-back, was the man that was playing him on. 
If he hasn't seen him necessarily out of his peripheral vision and he knows that he's offside because he's gone past Flint. Maybe he thought he was offside there and didn't commit, hadn't realised Bennett had played him on. Yeah, but he should, that's why he's just got to play to the whistle and bring it down because he would have been in through. But And that's another bit. When you play like the line, Fulham be defended brilliantly, all getting up as a unit. That little half a yard from Bennett could have cost his team there. As it is, it's a Cardiff throw. And a long one. On the agenda here for Sean Morrison, who's stood back with his uh, heels against the advertising hoardings and now launches it in towards the edge of the six-yard box. Mitrovic is back there to help it away. Bennett brings it down, right out on the left-hand touchline. Morrison uh, just tried to turn. Kearney anticipated that, but Bakuna can sweep up, and he'll go back for his goalkeeper, and Alex Smithies will clear. Glatzel comes to meet it from an onside position. In uh, doing so, he's headed it back into his own half, potentially dangerously. Kearney putting the pressure on Bakuna, but he will be able to guide it back to his goalkeeper, Smithies. And nine minutes into the second half, after that flurry of goal mouth action at the end of the first half, this second half so far has been largely in keeping with what we've seen in the majority of the game. A tight midfield battle. An intriguing one between two contrasting systems and not too many goal-scoring opportunities being created at either end, Matt Murray. Yeah, Fulham came out of the traps a little bit quickly, but then since then, as you say, it's been a lot of Fulham moving the ball around, but Smithies hasn't had a serious save to make in this half, and that's it. He said it at half-time. Scott Park will be saying, we're getting into the area. He's got to be clinical, got to work him. But um, it's interesting as well. Whenever the ball goes back to Smithies on a back pass, they chase him down to make him kick first time and then look to pick up the second ball, and... That, you know, I haven't noticed that side of Fulham before when I watched them, but they do, they do press hard as well. They have a free kick here after a foul by Joe Bennett on knockout. And it's a free kick which will be taken by Fulham 20 yards inside the uh, Cardiff half. Similar distance away from the edge of the penalty area, a little bit further out than that perhaps. And an opportunity for Sessignon just to lob one up here. Ream has three Cardiff players around him. Mitrovic makes a run from deep. Morrison has attacked the ball and done really well to get his head to it. And then Murphy will turn it forward. That's the cue for Glatzel to come and uh, try and mop up. And that's brilliant. Calm defending from Joe Bryan. Got there ahead of Glatzel. Took it down with his first touch. And then, having just cushioned it, volleys the ball calmly and takes the pace off it gets it back to his goalkeeper that's immaculate defending yeah I mean it's a bit risky but wow that is serious confidence when you're getting closed down like that to take a touch oh with the ball coming down with that high that was brilliant absolutely brilliant and now Fulham are able to dominate possession again because a lot of defenders would have just put that into Rosette well, when your old man's a heart surgeon like Joe Bryan's is, I guess that you have that little bit of a, a touch about you. Anyway, he fancies himself as uh, an artist and a, a ball-playing defender. He coped with that fantastically well. They had possession, Fulham. The edge of the uh, centre circle with Tim Ream feeding Mawson, and back he goes for Ream again. We're 11 minutes into the second half here in Cardiff, and it is still 1-1. And Mawson will bring the ball forward towards the halfway line. Scott Parker in his a dark jacket, just gesticulating on the edge of his uh, technical area. Something that he's seen, a message he's trying to get across, I think, to Kearney. The ball played for by Mawson. Turn around the corner by Cavalera for Mitrovic. Now to Kearney. Kearney on the half turn, gets it away from Rawls, who shattered him so effectively for most of the evening. Back for Harrison Reed. Play for by Reed into the feet of Mitrovic. Mitrovic trying to turn the ball away from Morrison. Almost the perfect pass for an excellent Brian run, but knocked away well by Cardiff. Return from the back by Sessignon. And Flint will get a shout from his goalkeeper and he'll heed it as well. And the ball rolls through inside the penalty area to our right hand side for Alex Smithies. It's 1 1. The more you watch Mitrovic, you think Fulham had done so well to keep him in this division because. His link-up play, brilliant. How he managed to turn there with Morrison, who was very good in the Premier League, so tight to him, turned, nearly got that ball through. In defensively, long throws, he heads it clear. Corners, he heads it clear. His link-up play, he's got the goal. He is a very, very good footballer and keeps his system, but the way they've managed to keep him is massive for me. Five goals in six games this season. 28 now in 65 for Fulham. But it's a goal-scoring record for them in this division has been absolutely brilliant. If you uh, 
include the, the half season that he played when he first came from Newcastle. He's now got 17 in 23 games in the championship in Fulham colours. Now, he's the target on the edge of the penalty area as Fulham have another free kick. This one is in front of us. We're midway inside the half that Cardiff are defending. It's played for by Kearney into the feet of uh, Anthony Knockar. Back for Kearney again. Kearney works it back for Alfie Mawson. Now to Tim Ream. And the two centre-halves exchange another pass a piece before Mawson will just bring it forward and then go back for Ream. Ream to Arta, who's uh, dropped back and just becomes a third centre-half when Fulham have possession. Ball will be played now into the feet of Kearney. Kearney can't turn away from Rawls, so he's just played it safe. Back from whence it came to Tim Ream. Now out to Arta. Arta to Reed. Reed under pressure from Glatzel. Turns in easy possession. Takes it towards the edge of the centre circle. Into the feet of Arta. Back for Ream. And it's so patient and measured. The build up from Fulham. Cardiff being disciplined. Doing their jobs defensively. Just chasing. Not committing. Just following the Fulham bodies all over the field. Now they'll work it forward with a little more perception. Into the feet of Reed. Reed to Kearney. Kearney found a, a yard and a half of space in there. But uh, they didn't play it back to him would have been able to turn in possession and drive to the edge of the Cardiff penalty area instead the ball has gone back into central midfield Sessignon Sessignon to Knockard the home crowd finding their voice again Bakuna in there strongly on Reed. who's just given a little nudge over there by Glatzel once he'd uh, been brought down pound for pound Harrison Reed can look after himself he's only five foot six but he's uh, Pretty hefty. Ball play forward. Almost a perfect pass for Joe Bryant. And well defended. It is a corner to Fulham after the sliding challenge from Peltier. Yeah, that word patient. Patient, probing football. And then they're just trying to then suddenly increase the tempo. Good run from Bryant from out to in. Arta takes that false fullback position a lot for Fulham, getting on, dropping in to get on the ball. But um, the reason I think they're leaving a few on Harrison Reed and people like that, uh, the likes of Tomlin, they're just so frustrated. They're <laughs> chasing shadows at times. So this is Fulham's third corner of the night. Their second of the second half. It's an away swinger towards the edge of the box. Arta was waiting. It wasn't enough on it. Murphy was able to get there. And then Bennett will clear his lines. Ball just uh, dropping into the stand in the uh, rows, four or five rows in front of us. Throw taken quickly by Harry Arta. It's 1-1 here in South Wales tonight. Cardiff took the lead three minutes before half time with Murphy's goal. Mitrovic equalised in first half stoppage time Kearney to knock up knocked away by Rawls neither side have made any changes as yet but I think a Cardiff change will be imminent in fact it looks as though it could be a double change imminent Patterson and Hoylett are the players that are getting ready Harrison Reed for Fulham chipped in towards Mitrovic Mitrovic just uh, pulls Morrison out of position sets it up for Arta but he's driven it wide and probably some way wide in the end as well yeah but that was the play again Mitrovic pulling off onto the shoulder of the centre half but everything that goes into Mitrovic sticks he, br he brings it down with quality and then the layoff to Arta again he's perfect saying go on hit me first time but he does scuff it you know it's not a cleanest of strikes pulls it a long way wide where he would be wanting he'd be expecting to come on and really drive that uh, and so he's pulled it wide but I'm not surprised that Neil Warnock is looking to his bench because these players if you look at what their GPS is and everyone will read the amount of work the likes of Tomlin and I have to do just shifting side to side going to press and it's been very difficult to make the play predictable um, and that's why they play these little passes just to move people around but ultimately Smithy still hasn't had a clear cut a real big save to make in his half Fulham haven't got into that dangerous areas a lot of their play has been in their own half or just in this middle third Fulham will bring it forward now down the uh, left hand touch line knocked away from the edge of the penalty area and clear out of play for a throw the throw won't be taken until the uh, the double change so the first player to come on is Callum Patterson he's only played a couple of games for Cardiff against Fulham in his career and scored in them both and he will come on to replace Lee Tomlin Patterson so versatile played in Scotland he played 
invariably as a fullback, he can play as a winger, played as a striker for a lot of last season. I would imagine he'll play as a 10 here in behind Glatzel. The two games that he's played so far this season, play one as a 10 and then one in central midfield in a 4-4-2. He'll come on, the other is Junior Hoylett. And he will come on and replace Gavin White, who was excellent in the first half, but hasn't really had so much of a chance to shine in the second. Double change for Carter. Yeah, and Gavin White has done so much work tracking back, tracking the fullbacks, and quite rightly so. He's put a couple of dangerous balls in, but he's getting a standing ovation for his work rate, for his discipline for the side. As for Patterson, yeah, Lee Tomlin again, worked really, really hard and not had, he's a player who enjoys being on the ball. He hasn't been able to do that. But Patterson's going to have to go in there, work, be disciplined, but he's very good. He's not surprised he's got those goals. Last season, I didn't know he could, had that goal-scoring ability, but he had a real knack of arriving in the box in dangerous positions. And again, on that transition, he should be able to hurt this Fulham team, and that's why Warnock's gone to his bench. 64 gone, and it's 1-1. Fulham uh, take a throw. Do they now want a free kick? Yeah. Referee Robinson uh, just uh, having a look at a challenge from Murphy. Must admit, I can't see what his uh, signal is. He has given the free kick. It's uh, going to be Cavalero to swing this in. And Morton makes his way forward. What he would give for a, a goal as a former Swansea player here. Ream is forward as well. And making a run from deep, Tom Kearney. Cardiff players defending man for man. Mitrovic, Flint's got his arms all around him. Cavalero swinging in. It's a really poor delivery. Patterson's first touch of the night. A good one to sweep that away. Session then helps it forward. Certainly wasn't what he intended. Knockout might be able to make something of it. And Hoylet has uh, just given him a shove, but Knockout can pick it up. Then he goes back for Session Cleared out towards Bennett. Bennett will play the ball forward. And what a touch that is from Rawls. And now Patterson will make his way forward. Rawls as Arta catches him late. Sends a long diagonal over towards the right-hand touch line the referee has said no advantage he stopped the play although Cardiff are in a great position he's going to call Harry Arter back it's such a simple decision for the referee to give him a yellow card simple decision to give the yellow card but he had a little look and thought should I play advantage and I in my opinion and Neil Warnock looks very frustrated down there he should have let that go just a little bit longer because the rules brilliant he had a look up and he realized Patterson had pulled over onto that far right hand side he played a great ball and then got caught by Arta and there was an overlap over there Murphy was there with Patterson and it was a really dangerous position so I think yes yellow card but could have brought it back and that that's what will frustrate Cardiff they'll, they'll want to score now from this set piece because you know they were in a good position and Neil Warnock's just having a chat with a fourth official now not for the first time in his uh, managerial career no uh, Dean Whitestone, the fourth official, when he saw the appointment, I'm sure will have uh, steeled himself for the dialogue of the night. I'm just seeing a replay of it. It's a, a difficult one, I suppose, as the ball had gone into quite a wide position, but I, I totally agree with you, Matt. And then from the resulting free kick, they haven't been able to do anything with it, but they do actually win a throw. Flint's done well, forced Kenny to put it over the line. And so now an opportunity for a Morrison long throw from the right-hand touchline. It's about level with the penalty spot, I suppose. Yeah. 12 yards from goal, this is a chance for him. Yeah, you know you're going to launch it in, and that's where, again, the likes of Mitrovic um, and, and, and Morrison will want to get the first contact on it. You've got to get the first contact and then look for second balls. But with that chance again, I just thought it could have just maybe one or two seconds long. I know there were a lot of red shirts back, but just let it go just for a slight bit longer. That's all I, I think he could have done. But all in all, I think the refs had a decent game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Second game in 48 hours for him as well. Long uh, ball thrown inside the penalty area. It was Mitrovic that got that first contact as prescribed by Matt. And towards the right-hand touchline. Cardiff win the seconds with Morrison. Good turn from a centre-half. Got a career as a right winger if he wants one. And Archer has come across and he thought he was fouled by Morrison. And then jumps up and down with his head in his hands. He can't believe that the referee has given that to Cardiff and not to Fulham. Neil Warnock's not sure. He's in the uh, ears of the fourth official, Dean Whitestone, again. And was uh, just a little flashpoint after. Now, the referee's going to go and speak to the assistant referee. I just wonder whether he thinks that was a dive from Arta. And if he does... Arta could be in serious trouble. He's just been booked a minute or so ago. Was there significant contact on him from Morrison? The referee will consult with the assistant. Arta and Mitrovic are trying to listen in and lip read as well. 
Arta could be in a spot of bother here as he just creeps forward again to where the dialogue is uh, happening and the uh, oh he's going to be off he is Harry Arta is dismissed second yellow card and on his return to South Wales where he played last season he is sent off and Cardiff had the numerical advantage for the last quarter of the game and Arta has the long dispiriting trudge from one corner flag over towards this near touchline Harry Arta sent off he got in there ahead of Morrison and then it is having seen the replay a shocking and elaborate dive he absolutely only has himself to blame yeah no complaints and it doesn't matter I know people say oh well he's, what advantage is he getting it's going to be a corner anyway but you can see uh, uh, quickly the linesman's right on the spot shakes his head to say nah no foul no contact nah point straight to the flag and say corner and then Neil Warnock's asking the question the players have come over but it is a dive so it doesn't matter where you dive and this there's massive moments in games momentum changes could be substitutions decisions given a sending off is massive and that's huge for how they dominate possession but now first and foremost they have to stick to their jobs and defend a free kick in a very dangerous position because it's gone from a corner now to a free kick in a dangerous position which is swung in left footed against the 10 man and Bettinelli's come out and got a strong right fist to it to knock it away out it comes to the edge of the area for Bennett back in from Bakuna Flint is onside he's going to be able to keep it in no he can't quite down by the corner flag he's gone out of play for a goal kick Fulham are going to make a change pretty much straight away and it's Johansson who's going to come on the player left out of the starting lineup tonight the Norwegian international and he will be on in a moment he will be one of the forward three surely who is going to be sacrificed here the Cavalera will knock up I'm sure just to get an extra body back in the midfield Scott Parker's trying to get the message across to the uh, referee they want to make the change before Bettinelli's goal kick it is Knockart who comes off Johansson on for him well it's been an intriguing night all round and we talked about the midfield battle and the potential for a few flash points didn't see it coming like that two yellow cards for Harry Archer in the space of a minute can't have any complaints about either of them the second one I'm sure will really disappoint his manager it's just a rush of blood to the head I can't understand why you would throw yourself to the ground and dive like that just to try and make something happen and get an advantage that isn't there it, it wasn't even a good dive yeah it was no point the linesman was right on the spot and it doesn't matter whether it's to win a, a, a free kick a penalty where it's a dive is a dive and that was it and I like Harry Art and I rate him but now we should see the possession stats start to shift big time 1-1, 19 to go, Bakuna, excellent pass, out to the left-hand side for Hoylett, Hoylett on the edge of the penalty area, ball swept inside the penalty area, rolls on the stretch, and Reed will be able to clear, only as far as Bennett, the whole game has shifted 30 yards upfield now, Hoylett's got it, coming in off the left-hand touchline, behind him he's got Cessignon, and then Bennett, Bennett with a, a little drop of the shoulder, and a shimmy and a pass in towards Rawls well defended by Reed. who's was fouled then by Rawls and it's a free kick which will be taken on the Fulham right hand side you're listening to Cardiff against Fulham in the EFL on TalkSport 2 with Screwfix proud partners of the EFL it's going to be interesting now to see if Fulham still try and play the possession game from the initial uh, free kick uh, corner that, sorry when they tried to play out from a goal kick they did and Bettinelli has got a yellow card there and I'm sure that was a descent and what it is, is Fulham had squeezed up, ball comes into the box, the Cardiff player is offside, but the rule is a rule, it, the, the, the defender has to deal with it, and he's saying, well hang on a minute, we squeezed the line, why don't you put the flag up, we, we're under pressure now, when he was clearly ball aimed for him and in an offside position, but the ball's got nowhere near him, and that's the rules, but that's why Bettinelli, and I think he's also frustrated about the, the, uh, the double yellow card, but this will just change the whole game now, and from Fulham believing they should win this game, I'm sure they'd be happy with a point. Well, remember, Cardiff have won both of the home games that they played so far this season. They've won them both late on. One with an 88th minute, one with a 96th minute winner. If they win this one, then they will go above Fulham in the table. And they're on the front foot here at Cardiff with Lee Peltier making his way out towards the right-hand touchline. Murphy 
Left footed ball, he slipped, he still found Rawls towards the edge of the area, left footed shot, whistles wide, Bettinelli had it covered at his near post, 17 minutes for either side to win it, and one apiece on TalkSport 2. Now it's Cavallero who's having to tra trap Peltier back. Uh, uh, you know, towards his own goal. Then rules strike from distance. The red shirts coming out, but listen to the noise levels. They're right up behind them. There's not a fan who sat down behind that Bettinelli goal. Everybody's expectant, and you feel that when you're the away side. You feel that the home team scents blood. You know, they're there, they're, they're coming for you, and you've got to manage it. But at the same time, these guys have to concentrate at the back because there's still some very, very good attacking players on show for Fulham. A little bit of match management going on from the Fulham play at the moment every restart of play is uh, taking an eternity and then a free kick goes Cardiff's way it's a clash of heads between Reed and Murphy I don't know whether there's uh, blood visible on the, uh, the face of either uh, it looks as though Reed might uh, just need a, a little bit of attention he's the one that's given the free kick away uh, Murphy goes across sportingly just to make sure he's okay uh, Reed is uh, going to be have to be uh, patched up by the full of medical staff. Well, it's been a fantastic start to the sporting weekend on the TalkSport network. Another huge day of uh, live sport on TalkSport 2 tomorrow. It starts with Adrian Clark and Mark Webster looking ahead to a busy weekend of sporting action across the TalkSport network from 8 on weekend sports day tomorrow morning from midday. Bristol City against Middlesbrough live and exclusive in the EFL from 2.30 as part of game day. Ian Danter brings you Chelsea against Sheffield United and finally at five after all the day's results Adrian with the full-time phone all live and only on Talk Sport 2 tomorrow and in the next couple of minutes we'll remind you as well of everything that's coming up on Talk Sport with two live and exclusive games for you tomorrow from the Premier League now Reed has just been patched up a little knock round the mouth I think but Fulham temporarily down to nine as they defend this set piece which is in towards Morrison headed away by Mawson out towards the touchline it's a Cardiff throw the cue for Morrison to make his way over Harrison Reed back on the field and Fulham restored to what is now their complement of ten after the dismissal of Harry Arter for two yellow cards for a foul and a dive 1-1 one, one the score 15 minutes plus stoppage time to go I think there'll be a fair bit of stoppage time to be added on can Cardiff get their noses in front again? High long throw from Morrison. Player goes down inside the penalty area. High clearance from Cavalera buys his side a little bit of time. No penalty given. The inquest is immediate from the Cardiff players. And when the whistle does go, it's a full and free kick for a push on Mitrovic just outside his own penalty area. But should it have been a penalty? Well, there's a lot of bodies around him. Time is now. I think that's soft enough for me. In a way, the referee's right there. There's not enough to make Flint go down. And could he be consistent and give it a yellow for that as well? But I think that's not so bad. There is a little bit of contact, but the referee's right on the spots. But Mr. Robinson's just going to have to keep a lid on this because both sets of players and with the crowd and everyone else, he's got to keep his calm, show his experience. Um, I'm not sure what's going on now. They're just they want to take it quicker but you can just hear the crowd so the referee has just got to keep a lid on this and just get, calm things down if he can the ball will be cleared down the uh, Cardiff right hand side by Murphy uh, Fulham will make a change tell us as a goalkeeper do you get a warning from the referee before he produces a yellow card for time wasting the only reason I'm asking you that better than he's on a yellow for descent and is time waste now I would want him if I was a Fulham supporter I'd want him to, to run the clock down as he is doing so I'm not criticising him but I just wonder is the referee mandated to tell you to hurry up and uh, give you a warning or can he just produce a second yellow card I imagine he can just produce but they always warn you up, warn you they usually just have a little jog by you look at you and say oh and point in the watch and say keep doing that or we'll book you and he'll be mindful that he doesn't really want to have to send him off for that so he will give him a good warning but Bettinelli's got to be careful as well knowing he's already on a yellow Fulham down to 10 on the uh, front foot with uh, Cavallero who's defended by Bennett who might just have used his arm in front of the assistant referee to shield the ball the referee says play on back it goes from Kearney to Harrison Reed. Now to Mawson. Fulham will bring on the Bubica camera in a moment, which will be their second change. They brought uh, Johansson on for knockout in the immediate aftermath of Arta's dismissal. Ball back for Bettinelli again. It's an open play. He can waste as much time as he thinks he can get away with now. 
eventually clips it down towards the right-hand touchline where it's uh, headed by Sessignon further down the line, chased after by Cavallero, Flint's there first, and Bennett then plays it back for Morrison. And Matthew called it, as soon as the art of dismissal happened, the possession statistics have almost turned on their head. High ball fall from Peltier, towards the edge of the penalty area, Callum Patterson comes to meet it, Fulham win it, Back it goes to Morrison, Morrison to Flint, forward from Flint, brought under control from Reed. Sessignon lays it back to his uh, goalkeeper, and Bettinelli will just calm things down and pass it outside the box, finds him Ream, and Fulham will uh, try and build from the back again. 12 to go, Cardiff 1, and the 10 men of Fulham level with them at one apiece. Well, they can really afford to lock on now, Cardiff, and really press high. Ball headed on and Murphy chased after it, but straight through for Bettinelli again. They want to make this change to uh, Fulham, but the ball hasn't gone out of play yet. Bettinelli just drops the ball down. Glatzel keeps him honest by uh, putting a little bit of pressure on and Bettinelli clears it upfield. Headed on by Patterson. Glatzel couldn't quite get there first ahead of Ream. Bakuna brings it down though in the centre circle for Cardiff. Joe Bennett invited forward. Cavallero comes back. Mendes Lang will be coming on for uh, Cardiff in a moment as well. Cavallero just uh, having a little nibble at Joe Bennett. The ball there to be won. Flint out to Morrison on halfway as Cardiff bring it forward. One apiece with just over 10 to go. Morrison continuing his run forward. Looking to try and get the ball into the feet of Glatzel. Couldn't find it. Fulham bring it away. It's Johansson just having his shirt pulled by Bakuna. And he's got past him. And then that might be a yellow card as well. So Harrison Reed continue to uh, drive forward. Uh, Brian, I beg your pardon, continue to drive forward. And he was fouled. And it is uh, going to be a yellow card to Bakuna for the challenge. 1-1, one, one, 10 to go. Yeah, when you pull a shirt like that, definitely yellow. And there the referee tried to give advantage. He did right to pull it back. And then I'm not surprised that Scott Parker's looking to his bench because Cavallero has worked so hard. But now, if they're going to get out, they need the likes of Kamara with those fresh legs because they know they're going to absorb a lot of pressure. So Cardiff is going to have a lot of the ball, a lot of the ball. But then, if Fulham can uh, break quickly, they need fresh legs. One, to stop the, you know, the stem, the flow, but also to get them up the pitch and get them up the, uh, out the other end. But as for, for Cardiff, they know now they have to go on and win this game. be a massive moment. They've got to capitalise on this situation. They believe that a chance will come. And Fulham at the moment are showing real character. They're great on the ball, but they're showing character to defend and work hard. So a couple of wingers introduced. Nathaniel Mendes-Lang coming on to replace Murphy the uh, Cardiff City goal scorer makes way and that's Cardiff's last change Fulham's second change Camera coming on to replace Cavallero Mawson from a free kick for Fulham nine minutes for either side to win it Mawson forward away from the camera Bennett can uh, win it back finds Patterson Patterson to Glatzel Glatzel continuing his run forward good reverse ball almost got Mendes Lang in uh, but it was cleared easily in the end Bettinelli just happy to hammer it upfield 70 80 yards on the clearance and out for a throw which will be taken on the card of City right eight and a half to go I'm just not sure there if Mendes Lang should have maybe held his whip a little. I can see the idea of it and then the ball through, but it's a difficult ball. But if Mendes Lang holds his whip and then all those blue shirts make the whip for the goal in the box and Mendes Lang can deliver him. But I understand why he's making that run from out to in. And just another, you know, half a yard on the ball and Lang is in. But that's again good turnover from Cardiff and good play. Bennett finds Hoylett. Hoylett on the Cardiff City left hand side. Trying to take on Sessignon clips back inside right footed ball swung inside the penalty area Cardiff will win the seconds with Mendes Lang down by the opposite corner flag right footed ball hooked in Glatzel that was his chance he's put it wide well we talked about Grant I mentioned him and his header for, for Huddersfield and not having much service he got a great header against against Fulham well that's a similar sort of ball going away from goal and that's a decent chance he's under a little bit of pressure from Mawson but he'll still think they should at least be hitting the target but this is the pressure <coughs> sorry again Bettinelli taking his time over the kick he will be warned by the referee but the ref will not want to send him off for this now we're in the 83rd minute one apiece 
Bennett on the left hand touchline for Cardiff just stumbled and lost his footing and Tom Kearney can bring it forward Bennett tried to handle it and was uh, unable to stop a counter attack in its infancy and then Camera wins the throw which will be taken on the uh, right hand touchline Camera, the French winger who spent the second half of last season out on loan in Turkey his last Fulham goal back on New Year's Day against Arsenal but he's one of only two red-shirted players inside the Cardiff penalty area. Sessignon takes this throw. The other of them, Mitrovic, comes to meet it. It's knocked away by Hoylett. Kearney brings it down. Hasn't quite got as much time as he thought. Glatzel's put him on the deck. And Tom Kearney has stayed down, just holding his right ankle. But part of this might be just managing the match as well as the, uh, the severity of the challenge on him. His manager comes across and uh, gives him a pat just leans over the touchline to do so can he help back to his feet without the need for treatment it will be a full and free kick midway inside the Cardiff half 84 gone 1-1 yeah, and I think the referee, again, the right decision, definite foul. Kearney sort of turned into trouble, but just shifted it, the ball, quickly enough. But the fact that Fulham aren't committing anybody's forward really shows you that they're going to be the happier of the two teams with the point. Neil Warnock will believe his team should go on and, uh, and win this game. Just at least get one more chance, having a lot of the pressure. Johansson's ball forward, Cameron let it run, Sessi on the overlap, and it was a really disappointing cross after an excellent move. Mitrovic, though, inside the penalty area, is claiming that he was wrestled to the ground there by Peltier. Nothing given by the officials, long booming clearance from Smithies, tries to release Hoylett at the other end. And then another coming together, this one uh, involving Hoylett and Mawson, and the free kick goes the way of... Fulham but Mitrovic was complaining thought that he should have had a penalty we're looking at a replay of it now Peltier didn't look at all as the ball came in he turned and he's pushed Mitrovic to the ground now VAR worried in action in this game I think would have given that there is a yellow card for time wasting it hasn't gone to the keeper it's gone to Mawson but I'll tell you what VAR as you say very interesting it would be but Mawson's the one who took the yellow he went over but now Bettinelli's going to take the kick but the ball went nowhere near Peltier so there's no way that the referee will have seen it because he's got to watch a bit of everything but I know the ball's going to come nowhere near him but that is still a foul that was like a rugby challenge the way he took him down or like a you know in America football when the yeah. linebackers <laughs> take each other out that was unreal but the ball didn't go to him but uh, again it showed though that Fulham can be a threat Peltier just wasn't watching the ball all he was doing was watching Mitrovic he had his back to the cross that was coming in he's a foul I, I would if I was doing the VAR and that was a, I would give a penalty for that even though it's, I know the ball's not gone near him but it's still a foul like the Arta incident he's not really gaining that much apart from he's trying to stop a, a, a corner so he's not a massive moment it's not like he's trying to win a penalty for his team but still a dive's a dive and he's tried to deceive the referee so I, I can understand why the officials have missed that but with VAR that would have been a penalty for me four minutes to go plus stoppage time five or six minutes I would imagine to be added on crowd of just over 22 and a half thousand here tonight the vast majority of them willing Cardiff on to a third late winner out of three home games this season you're listening to Cardiff against Fulham in the EFL on Talk Sport 2 with Screwfix, proud partners of the EFL. It's 1-1. The throw to Cardiff. Everybody, apart from Peltier and Smithies, back. That is a huge white towel that Morrison has gone to dry the ball. Not suggesting that Cardiff should only run to flannels, but well, that is a big towel. Yeah, very big towel, but... Cardiff will know they've scored late winners before, so they'll have that mindset. They'll believe one more chance will come. Long throw from Morrison, an awkward bounce. Didn't quite sit up for Hoylett. He will pick it up, but on the left-hand side of the penalty area this time. He's got Bennett in support. He's pulled it back for the fullback. Left-footed ball, whipped towards the back post. Header across the base, a goal. And he just beat the far post and the on-rushing Gladstone, who couldn't get a touch to turn it in. A chance for Morrison to give Cardiff an 88th minute lead oh massive chance and the way they set it back brilliant ball in from Bennett Glatzel's in there there's a few blue shirts in there I'm not sure if Morrison's going for goal or trying to head it back across into a dangerous area he just guides it he cushions it 
And I think everybody on that Fulham bench, they know what it's like when you're on the bench of the defending team. You take a big breath and then you see it just go wide and Morrison rightly has his head in his hands. He knows that was a big, big chance. But there will be a fair bit of stoppage and they are knocking at this door. They've got to keep pushing Cardiff. But credit Fulham as well, standing strong. It's, it's really intriguing, this game. Fulham will make their final change. Kearney coming off. And he's uh, going to be helped off the field with a yellow card by the referee for time-wasting. Le Marchand is coming on to replace him, so it's an attack-minded midfielder being replaced by another defender. All hands to the pump at the back for Fulham, who are hanging on. We're in the 89th minute. So, the crime count in the second half. Two yellow cards for Arta for a foul and a dive. Bettinelli's got a yellow for descent. A time-wasting caution for Mawson and a time-wasting caution for Kearney. Bettinelli takes the goal kick long ball into the Cardiff half Flint beat Mitrovic Morrison heads it away Hoylet brings it down Hoylet's lost out though camera into the feet of Mitrovic as he caught from behind by Flint Flint reacts very angrily as Mitrovic goes to ground play goes on and it'll be cleared down the Fulham right hand side by Harrison Reed. he's just then eased under the flight of the ball Mitrovic not back on his feet yet just gets back now very gingerly back upright holding his right ankle Cardiff get it upfield Patterson trying to make something happen he and Rawls just got in each other's way for a moment Rawls keeps it in down on the dead ball line back from him to Hoylett we're in the 90th minute at 1-1 the 10 men of Fulham hanging on high ball in from Hoylett far too high and Patterson's run towards the far post while Marshall by the Marshall goes out of play for a goal kick which will be taken by Bettinelli and will just about be in stoppage time by the time he takes it it's 1-1 now Sessignon has gone down maybe with a, a touch of cramp Fulham have made all three changes Rawls is trying to help him back to his feet but it is 1-1 as we prepare for stoppage time in what is a little bit feisty and ill-tempered now with both sides believing that the destiny of the points is not yet secure yeah and Fulham will look at this now and say it's a good point and they'll take if they can get it and they'll take the you know this character that they've shown they're trying to run the clock down which is what you do uh, Mitrovic is working hard up front but I think that it'll be disappointing Hoyle that he didn't play the ball to Bakuna he forced that cross and really another pass would probably be the best option but fair bit of stoppage time eh Jim six minutes Mawson heads the ball away and out for a throw which will be taken on the Cardiff City left hand side two live Premier League games for you tomorrow over on Talk Sport Southampton against Manchester United ground where Manchester United haven't lost for 16 years to the day and then Liverpool look for a club record 13th straight league win are at Burnley and 5.30 kickoff. both of those games live for you over on Talk Sport tomorrow here's Smithies clears his lines outside the penalty area Patterson does well holds it up Hoylett to Rawls Rawls inviting Glatzel to make his way forward and Ream gets there first and can just flick it back to his goalkeeper who clears hurriedly Bennett gets on the end of that clearance so too Sessignon who helps it down the right hand touchline and Flint lets it run out of play for a throw which Cardiff will take inside their own half we played a minute of stoppage time five to go 1-1 between Cardiff and 10 men Fulham most of the fans are staying aren't they they sense that there's going to be another chance the Fulham fans up quite subdued a bit nervous you like those fans behind that goal uh, behind the Fulham goal for, for Cardiff are willing their team on but you just feel there's going to be one more chance you really can feel it but Fulham are doing all they can just to calm it down but oh, this is this has been really really exciting without too many clear cut chances Bennett heads the ball away out for another throw which will be taken by Sessignon on the uh, Fulham right hand side arches the back hurls it as long as he can towards Mitrovic Mitrovic leaning over Bennett got his head to it but it's gone out of play for a Cardiff throw this time which Morrison will take and he will hurl it forward towards the halfway line in the third minute of stoppage time now long throw from Morrison headed down by Patterson brought under control on halfway by Bakuna Bakuna to Peltier Peltier just bring it into Fulham territory 
into the feet of Mendes Lang hasn't had too many opportunities to shine since coming on back for Peltier boom forward Patterson does well protects the space flicks it on towards Hoylet coming across cameras lost out Gladsell's got it Gladsell helps it inside the area and Mawson calmly takes a touch on the edge of the six-yard box and Fulham get it away. Back it comes inevitably. Rawls, Patterson with a left-footed shot. It hit Ream. It's headed defensively by Mawson. And Bettinelli races across his dead ball line to stop it going out of play for a corner. A bit of surprise me there. Glatzel's got in to the byline to cut the ball back. There's so many blue shirts outside the box. You're thinking there's only Mitrovic up here. Commit some more bodies forward. Try and get in there. Get that winner. Another thing you've seen Cardiff do, well, Flint do in his career and Cardiff do with other players, is put the likes of Flint up front, maybe, and just go a little bit more direct, see if he can cause trouble, get onto the second balls. Benelli's kicked the ball out there, but I'd actually say he's done that on purpose. Try and get them up the pitch and, and press it. I know Mitrovic frustrated, he's getting well niggly here, but they try to get them up the pitch and delay it a bit. Smithies from a throw takes it and whacks it upfield now there's a coming together off the ball camera and rolls and it's a free kick to Cardiff which is 10 yards inside the Fulham half in the 94th minute of the game they've scored a winner later than this already this season Cardiff rolls to take this free kick Fulham keep a high line rolls sends it deep towards the far post the heads go up for it and the marshal knocks it away but only after it's gone out of play for a cardiff city corner it's their first of the second half it comes four and a half minutes into stoppage time rawls will take it everybody apart from peltier and his goalkeeper ford bennett mendes lang on the edge of the box everybody else inside the six yard box high it comes inside the penalty area from rawls and Fulham get there and able to knock it away. Cameron did a very good job for his side. Smithies, fields at the back, sweeping up. Long right footed clearance from him. Hoylett might be in here. Flint has stayed forward. Hoylett hoisting it inside the box, but the flag's up against him. And it's a free kick to Fulham, and they will just about be able to run the clock down from there. A minute to go. Mitrovic now goes down her with a touch of cramp six minutes will be extended the referee's going to allow time to be added on for this but it will just allow everybody to regroup for them to take a, a collective in-breath and steal themselves for the final 60 seconds 1-1 one, one. you have to say I know Fulham are very good on the ball but they've had to dig in work hard but their defensive duty on set pieces has been brilliant both teams has but their ball whipped in again a, a con, uh, you know a combination of maybe um was it uh, a ream and, and Mitrovic got the ball away but then the way they squeeze the pitch still so late in the game to leave Hoyler offside that is discipline that's desire and that's work on the training ground so that's been very impressive play restarts with a Bettinelli free kick for the offside should be another 60 seconds to be played Mawson clears down the touchline Bennett chests it down Bennett there ahead of camera Helps it forward, bounce kind for Fulham, Mawson ducks his head in and clears, Rawls wins it back, does well, finds Bennett, chipped over the top, Mawson gets his head to that one as well. Back from Hoylett, Gladsell brings it down, finds Rawls, this is still much nearer halfway than the Fulham penalty area, Le Marchand gets there, helps it forward, he just tried to lob it up to stop it going too far forward. Johansson chased after it but couldn't get there. Long throw from Morrison. The six minutes are up. It's headed away by Mawson. And Camera just felt the hands of Bennett in his back went to ground. And that will just about be that. I think Fulham are going to hang on. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll boom this towards the corner. Uh, Bettinelli will take his time coming up to take it. But Fulham have seen what it's like now to chase the ball. They do it to a lot of teams, bop the ball around. They haven't had much of the ball. They're working hard. They're cramping up. But um, Cardiff have tried, tried too hard, but not really been able to break down this Fulham side. Long clearance from Bettinelli. Towards the edge of the penalty area, over the head of Mitrovic and out of play. And referee Robinson signals the end of a hugely enjoyable night. Cardiff won, Fulham won, a point really that would have suited neither side before kickoff. But once Harry Arta was sent off, Fulham very grateful to hear that full-time whistle.
the exchange of goals in the three minutes leading up to half time saw Cardiff take the lead and Fulham equalised straight away Fulham for most of the game until Arthur's dismissal looked far and away the more likely winners but it was long Cardiff pressure in the last 25 minutes pressure that Fulham were able to withstand with 10 men they keep their two point advantage above Cardiff in the table they move up level on points with Bristol City but they will see it as an opportunity loss and so too will Cardiff who's 100% home record in the league this season comes to an end full time Cardiff 1 10 man Fulham 1